This video will explain the new fixed match semi-supervised learning algorithm from Google AI. One reason to be excited about this algorithm is because it is a relatively simple distillation of advanced topics in semi-supervised learning like consistency regularization through data augmentations and self-training. This kind of algorithm is useful for semi-supervised learning problems. This is the setting where you have a large unlabeled data set and a small set of labeled data points. We'll see a comparison showing the difference between doing pure supervised learning on that limited data set compared to fixed match in which the supervised learning algorithm performs extremely poorly in comparison. This video will explain the details of fixed match, such as the use of enforcing consistent predictions between weak and strongly augmented unlabeled images. This paper is also really great because it shows an extensive ablation study showing the importance of hyperparameter tuning, this kind of auto ML with this algorithm. Different factors like the choice of optimizer, weight decay, and the size of the unlabeled data set relative to the labeled data set can have a massive impact on the resulting success of fixed match. This video will explain the new fixed match semi-supervised learning algorithm from Google AI. This algorithm is a novel combination of consistency regularization through data augmentations and self-training or pseudo-labeling. This achieves remarkable performance in semi-supervised label percentages on CIFAR 10, such as about 95% using 250 labeled examples or 25 per class, about 89% accuracy using 40 labeled examples or four per class, and it even reaches a max of 84% accuracy in the extreme case of only using one sample per class. To recap some of the main ideas in this paper, fixed match, semi-supervised learning describes a paradigm where you have a large data set and only a small percentage of it is labeled. These algorithms try to make use of the large unlabeled data in order to improve the supervised learning performance validated on an external test set. Consistency regularization, such as unsupervised data augmentation, is one of the most popular techniques for semi-supervised learning. Usually, this is done by penalizing the model for making different predictions on data samples after they have been augmented. These augmentations can include things like rotations or color changes. Pseudo-labeling is a variant of knowledge distillation describing the case where the teacher label distribution contains only one hot encoded vectors. Self-training has also been gaining momentum to make use of unlabeled data, such as in the paper Self-Training with Noisy Student. Fixed match combines consistency regularization and pseudo-labeling in a very interesting way. This technique uh, improves on previous state-of-the-arts and semi-supervised learning, and I also really like this paper because of the presentation of ablation studies, or isolating different factors that contribute to the results of their experiments. This table compares the fixed match semi-supervised learning algorithm with supervised learning on different percentages of labeled data. You can see from this chart that in the case of limited labeled data, supervised learning performs very poorly compared to using a semi-supervised learning algorithm such as fixed match. This is especially evident in the case of 40 labels on the CIFAR 10 dataset, where supervised learning alone has an error rate of about 64% compared to 13% with the fixed match semi-supervised learning algorithm. From this table, you can get a sense of why we might be interested in using semi-supervised learning and the performance benefit that you can get by doing this. This slide presents an overview of the fixed match semi-supervised learning algorithm. In this algorithm, we have two loss functions, the loss on the unlabeled data and the loss on the supervised data, and these two loss functions are blended together to form the loss for the model. So with the unlabeled data, what this algorithm does is it takes a given unlabeled data point and then it augments it with two strengths, producing a weakly augmented image and a strongly augmented image. So this is already a novel contribution of this paper to this consistency regularization pipeline. It's not common to compare the weakly augmented image with the strongly augmented image. Usually you just think of this as comparing the strongly augmented image with the original data point. So then what they do in their pipeline is they take the weakly augmented image and they run the model over it to get a prediction of class labels from that weakly augmented image. So if, the, if a given class prediction exceeds a threshold shown in the loss function as this one predicate, uh, max q sub b being greater than the threshold, meaning that if the class label exceeds this threshold, this will be set to one, and then you will include the cross entropy between the prediction on the strongly augmented image and the pseudo label in the loss function. Otherwise, if it doesn't exceed this dotted line, it's set to zero, and this loss doesn't contribute at all to the update. So then what you do from the prediction, if it does exceed the threshold, is you convert it into a pseudo label or a one hot encoded vector. So it's specific that they're uh, training this on one hot encoded vectors, compared to something like trying to predict the uh, soft label distribution and comparing this overall distribution of every class compared to this kind of a 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 kind of distribution. So then what they do is they take the cross entropy loss of the model's predictions on the strongly augmented image, which is augmented with a more intense algorithm like RAND augment or CT augment, which is a pipeline of these meta-learning uh, data augmentation algorithms like auto augment, population-based augmentation, and now they're comparing RAND augment and CT augment. So this is, produces a strongly um, a more augmented image, much uh, stronger transformation, 
which they can pair with the pseudo label on the weakly augmented image. To make this more concrete, we'll walk through the algorithm presented in the paper. So the fixed match algorithm takes as input a label data set X. So this consists of these XY pairs. So if you're in the CIFAR 10 image uh, data set, it might be like an image of a frog and then a label of three or something like that, whatever uh, Y label frog corresponds to. And then you have a subset of the CIFAR 10 data set that we're using to test out these semi-supervised learning algorithms. So the capital B in that case might be 40, denoting you know, 40 labeled images from the CIFAR 10 data set, or 250 or 1000 and so on. So then we have this unlabeled data set U, which is controlled by this parameter uh, mu, this unlabeled data ratio mu. So basically if mu is five and you're taking 50 labeled uh, data points from CIFAR 10, you're gonna have 250 unlabeled data points. So then another input to the algorithm is this confidence threshold tau, which we're gonna use for the unsupervised uh, loss function, where we're basically saying only if a uh, given prediction of a class exceeds this threshold, do we even include it in our overall loss function. So then with these uh, parameters, we also have the unlabeled loss weight, lambda sub u, which is how we blend these two loss functions together to update the model. So then you get the supervised learning loss by just uh, having the model run through the labeled data points while weakly augmenting the, uh, you know, the images in the data set. So this uh, notation alpha denotes doing a weak augmentation like a horizontal flip or a vertical horizontal translation, whereas the capital A denotes putting the image through something like RAND augment or CT augment. So then what we do is we loop through the unlabeled data, and we do this by first constructing the image that's strongly augmented and then getting our class label prediction on the weakly augmented image. Then we loop through this set of images and denoting whether you know, each of these uh, predictions of class labels exceed the threshold, and if they do, we include them in the loss function, and this is how we train the model in the semi-supervised learning context. This paper is combining two really interesting ideas in semi-supervised learning. The first of which is consistency regularization, which is where you're comparing the label distribution of augmented images compared to themselves based on different augmentations. So in this case, this is manifested by comparing these weakly augmented images and the strongly augmented images. So the weakly augmented images are constructed by these horizontal flips or these slight vertical or horizontal translations, whereas the strong augmentations are constructed by using RAND augment or CT augment, which are these kind of meta learning controllers that control the, uh, in RAND augment, they have these two parameters, N, N being the number of things like rotation, shear, translation, to apply in sequence to original image, and then this M parameter, which is the magnitude of how strongly to corrupt the image. So they do these two uh, different meta learning controllers on the augmentations, and then they'll apply cutout, which we'll look at later, which is basically just like drop out in the image space where you just take like a rectangle and just cut it out of the image. These charts from the paper compare using the RAND augment versus the CT augment controller for the strong augmentations. You can see in the case of the STL10 dataset that the uh, CT augment algorithm produces a much lower error rate than random augment does, but across the CIFAR10 and the uh, Street View house number datasets, the differences aren't that large. The next idea for semi-supervised learning that they use is pseudo-labeling. Pseudo-labeling is a family of techniques in the idea of knowledge distillation or self-training we're describing a specific case where you use hard or one hot labels instead of having this soft label distribution where you might say have something like uh, 0 0.02 applied to cat and then like 0 0.85 to frog and like 0 0.03 to airplane or some distribution like that where you use to compare the distributions compared to just having that you know hard label distribution of like 0 000100. So then what you do in pseudo labeling is you only retain the labels whose target class falls above a predefined threshold. So if the model gets this weakly augmented image and is not sure what class it is, it says, say applies 40% uh, to cat and 40% to dog, you're not even gonna include that in the loss function because it doesn't uh, contribute to the uh, cross entropy between the predicted distribution and then the actual distribution. In this case, the actual distribution is the pseudo label that the model had produced on the weakly augmented image. An interesting characteristic that arises out of using this thresholding function for the uh, max Q sub B or the prediction on the class label, the weakly augmented image, is that you get this kind of a curriculum for free. So when you have this uh, loss on the unlabeled data, if it doesn't exceed this threshold, this is just gonna be a zero and you're basically only gonna be doing supervised learning on the uh, labeled portion of the data set as this begins training because in the beginning of the training, the model's predictions are gonna uh, be less confident about the class distribution but as you train it further and further, it'll start to exceed this uh, thresholding parameter and start contributing to the overall loss function. This is a plot used in their ablation study to show the effect of the confidence threshold and what you set it to with respect to the error rates achieved with the uh, red denoting the baseline or the best performance that they achieved using a threshold of about 0.95. You can see the higher error rates with using a lower confidence threshold. So say if uh, in this case, it would be like if a given class just exceeds say 30% probability, you would include it in the loss function compared to uh, 0 
or some other uh, confidence threshold. This plot shows the results of the fixed match algorithm using random augment and CT augment for the strong augmentation on different percentages of the CIFAR 10, CIFAR 100, and Street View house number data sets. You see that in most cases the fixed match produces a much better performance than the previous paper from this lab, the remix match algorithm, which is a pretty similar algorithm but uses uh, some other things, one of which this distribution alignment, which is where you explicitly set it so when you're predicting the unlabeled data set, it uh, mimics a similar class distribution. So if you don't do something like that, you might encounter problems like class imbalance or these kinds of things. So, But anyways, you also see a big gain over unsupervised data augmentation, which is another algorithm using uh, this kind of consistency regularization to do unsupervised uh, or semi-supervised learning. In the case of the ImageNet semi-supervised learning setting, where you use 10% of the labeled ImageNet data set, the fixed match algorithm still underperforms this S4L self-supervised semi-supervised learning algorithm. This algorithm has a different approach to using the unlabeled data. In this case, it uses the self-supervised uh, rotate the image and then predict the rotation angle task compared to this consistency regularization with the data augmentation. So it's another algorithm for semi-supervised learning if you're looking to expand your toolbox and see all the different options you have for semi-supervised learning. In this case, they use two rounds of their training and they described that in the fixed match paper. If they also did two rounds of kind of refining their training, they could also reach a similar performance. One of the best characteristics about this paper is an extensive discussion of the ablation studies that they do in this paper or showing different factors of variation that can result in different results for their semi-supervised learning algorithm fixed match. So the first of which is consistency across runs. So in the semi-supervised learning problem, as you're kind of simulating it, you're sampling, say, 40 labeled data points from this 50,000 uh, labeled CIFAR-10 training data set. So you can imagine that how you sample these data points is enormously important for the accuracy you're going to end up receiving. Say you sampled the four most representative airplanes compared to four outlier airplanes. In the more extreme case of doing semi-supervised learning where you only have one sample per class or one labeled example for each class, or otherwise known as the one-shot learning case, they construct this experiment where they use this algorithm for detecting outliers that sort samples in the class based on how representative they are of the overall class. So you see when they use the, the pretty interesting algorithm that works really well, you see when they use the images that are supposed to be the most representative uh, images of this class, which is constructed through this algorithm that is in a paper that's linked to this uh, in the description, but it's outside of the scope of this video. But you see when they use the most representative image, they achieve 78% accuracy which is remarkable for using just one image per class. But when they use this bottom row of the outlier images, they get 10% or randomly guessing. So it's interesting to see the uh, performance variance between using the most representative to these progressively uh, less representative classes according to this algorithm, which if you wanna learn more about is linked in the description of the video. Another interesting ablation study is the ratio of unlabeled data. So you have this mu parameter that controls the amount of unlabeled data points you have with respect to the labeled data points of the supervised learning portion of the loss function. So they show here how when you have uh, you know, only twice as many labeled data points, unlabeled data points, you have a higher error rate compared to using more unlabeled data. In this case, they're also showing you the result of doing the uh, learning rate scaling, which is where you scale the learning rate with respect to the batch size and showing how this improves, especially in the case of where you have less unlabeled data. So this uh, kind of ablation, the difference between this uh, like turquoise line and the dotted blue line is, might be really interesting to you if you are in this kind of a case where you are doing semi-supervised learning, but it's not like your unlabeled data set is just completely dwarfs the size of your labeled data set. Also in their ablation studies are the effects of different hyperparameters of training these models. Things like the optimizer you choose to use, whether it's stochastic gradient descent or the atom optimizer and the different uh, you know, learning rates, the hyperparameters like the momentum, the beta terms that you might use, and showing how this can result in much different performance with this fixed match algorithm. Also showing this in the case of learning rate decay, whether using this kind of a cosine cycle where you have this kind of a cosine function as controlling the learning rate as a function of this uh, little k, which is you know what training step you're currently on, compared to the big k, which is I think how many training samples you're going to do, uh, steps you're going to do overall, compared to something like linear decay, where you just kind of linearly decrease the learning rate or not decaying at all. Again, showing a big variance, almost one percent between the error rate of doing cosine annealing with the learning rate compared to not uh, changing the learning rate at all. Another interesting ablation study they present is the result of using cutout in the strongly augmented images. Cutout describes as kind of a dropout in the data space where you randomly select this rectangle from the image and replace the pixels in it with random pixels, zero pixels, or 255 pixels. It's not exactly clear which one they use, but some kind of a random filling with respect to the cropped out image. So you see the different performance of doing the fixed match. Fixed match, the 4.84, the lowest error rate, is where you first pass the image through rand augment or CT augment and then use cutout compared to only passing it through cutout and then not using cutout at all, which I think just kind of coincidentally are both have this 6.15% error rate. 
Another ablation study with respect to hyperparameters of the uh, model configuration is this weight decay, which is basically where you're applying this regularization term to penalize large weight values. So that was really interesting that they get this kind of a spike in error rate with respect to such a refined scale of the weight decay. So you see in this scale between 10 to the minus 4 and 10 to the minus 3, you have this optimal value within that scale. And if you, you know, veer out to 10 to the minus 2, you get a much higher error rate. So this plot, this ablation, is showing you how kind of sensitive this algorithm can be to different hyperparameters of the model. So it's definitely important to do that kind of auto ML hyperparameter tuning with respect to the fixed match semi-supervised learning algorithm. Another interesting ablation from the paper is exploring the effect of pseudo labeling. So the, another idea in knowledge distillation or self-training is to have a soft distribution over the labels when you're doing this kind of distillation. Usually in the case of having a student network, a smaller capacity neural network, learn the label distribution from a larger capacity teacher network, you would soften the label distribution by adding this temperature term to the logits in the softmax layer. So what this would do is instead of producing a distribution like uh, 0 0.99 for the cat class and then like 0 0.00003 for frog and, and all these other classes, rather what you do is you soften it out with this temperature parameter. So it's say 0 0.05 cat, 0 0.08 frog, and then like 0 0.73 truck or something like that. So rather what they do in this ablation study is they show that you don't need to bother with uh, exploring this temperature parameter and that you get the best result by just using uh, one as the uh, like having this one hot encoded uh, class label of 000100 in the case of doing this kind of a consistency regularization. And they also explore uh, varying the temperature in the soft distribution with respect to the threshold use that kind of a max QB greater than the threshold is the difference between this say uh, turquoise line, dotted blue line, and green line. Even though they show that you don't need to do hyperparameter tuning on the temperature parameter with respect to the self-training and you know smoothing it out the distribution of the two uh, class labels, they do introduce a lot of hyperparameters and the ablation studies show that you should definitely be aware of all these hyperparameters and do some kind of auto ML with respect to applying this to your own data sets. Some of these hyperparameters include the threshold, you know, the lambda blending parameter, the size of the unlabeled to labeled data set, and then miscellaneous characteristics of training models like learning rate, you know, the optimizer parameters and weight decay. Another interesting hyperparameter is with respect to the way that you do this weakly augmented versus strongly augmented image. There's definitely a lot of ways to construct this. In their case, they kind of heuristically just do a horizontal flip and then a translation to weakly augment the images. And then they have a more rigorous way of forming the strongly augmented, these rand augment, CT augment kind of, uh, you know, augmentation scheduling things have been kind of heavily explored. And there's a lot of research around this, you know, this pipeline of auto augment, population based augment. There's like fast auto augment. There's a lot of research that has been done into the way they're doing strongly augment, but still the relationship between these two, definitely an open area for research in a way that I could see this uh, kind of technique being expanded further would be exploring this kind of a relationship. Thanks for watching this explanation of Fixed Match, a really interesting semi-supervised learning algorithm that combines this sort of uh, consistency regularization with pseudo labeling to achieve state-of-the-art results on semi-supervised learning on the CIFAR 10 data set and also great results on other data sets like CIFAR 100, Street View House Numbers, STL 10, and ImageNet. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.